So, guten Abend, meine Herren und Damen. Mein Deutsch ist nicht sehr gut. <laughs> so, you have to excuse me, and I think I should speak better <laughs> in English. I'm Richard Petrie. I'm very pleased to be here. Really, actually, delighted to come to a meeting of the German chapter and to get to know the sort of broader leadership group here that is building smart Germany. And, and it's a pleasure that I do recognize a good number of the you know, ladies and gentlemen in the room. Um, but I'm really looking forward to the next two days. And uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I've been with Building Smart about three years. And I've, my background is not really in software or standards. It's much more in buildings and construction across I would say buildings uh, industry, but also shipbuilding, oil and gas, and in Lloyd's Register in verification. So I, I come to this problem about the challenge of, of how to do things better in what I call the built asset industry. Uh, I hope with some sort of insights as to the practical and real world uh, from a number of points of view. I, I'd like to start by addressing three important questions in my mind. Why are open digital standards important? Why is building smart important to digital standards? And why you need to take a leading role? And I suppose this presentation is very much addressed to the leadership community rather than the technical community. I hope that by the time I get to the end of this conversation, you will um, uh, feel that I've given you some insights into my views for that. Open standards, why are they important? Well, I think change is inevitable. And the, the internet is very much demonstrating that uh, the sort of traditional ways of working are under threat and that uh, are being upended in many ways by digital technology. I think the other thing is that the consumers that we serve are expecting an entirely different level of service and value proposition from the one that they were ex we've ex sort of used to traditionally. And the, finally, the building and infrastructure sector is itself ripe for change. In terms of digitization, the sector is recognized as one of the, the, the laggards. And I think we cannot ignore it. It is coming. And my sort of view is we need to be on the front foot leading that change rather than on the back change, wondering what on earth is going on. So lead, follow, or be crushed. Change is inevitable. I think many people talk about the benefits on design, saving time and money in construction design and operations. I really do believe that's possible. I think most business leaders do. There are huge transaction costs that we put up with day to day. There are huge errors we make. And there are huge, if you like, struggles that businesses have to run what I would call firm, robust business processes because they can't manage the data and they don't have transparency of data on which to apply those business processes. So the Objective here is to make better and more informed decisions and to deliver better results to our customers or clients. What do we need for that? Well, first of all, we need open, shareable, machine-readable data. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But it's not at all. But that's f very clear to me that if you're going to have you know, digital business processes, that's really what we're coming down to. Open, shareable, machine-readable data. And good data is essential. What is good data? We have to ask that question. It's not a trivial question. When you really get down to thinking about the data that is in any digital process, understanding where it came from and, and, and what the value to a, a, a portion to it is very important. Good data requires standards. I think the legacy point is very important as well. We have to find a way to sort of build on the knowledge we've got rather than always sort of invent new. Building smart, why are we relevant? Where do we fit into this picture? I think that's one question um, that, that I'm certainly asked. And, and, and some of the answer is that this industry is hugely fragmented. It is very diverse around the world. And the standards that we're aspiring to create necessarily need to be global worldwide standards. Otherwise, you don't get the benefit out of them. They're not really shareable around the world. So. But our ambition in Building Smart is what I call a truly audacious goal, to enable the full benefits of digital ways of working for the built asset industry. 
That means building and infrastructure. It means worldwide. And it means, if you like, not just the IRC, but all the digital ways of working that, that flow right from, if you like, the, the workflow processes, perhaps at the construction floor, through to the business processes that the CEOs and the board need to just make their financial decisions about property investment or about new projects and, and proposals. For building smart, that means that we want to be the standards body of reference in this sector. We want our chapters to be strong and vibrant, to be very well engaged with their user base in the country, to be a channel both for, for challenge, for, for, for definition of needs, and, and for a channel for us to deploy solutions. So if you like, the blue circle is the, is the circle within which we hope that our, our chapters are working and the red inner circle is perhaps more where Building Smart International is working. And we also want the, the mark, the Building Smart mark, to be recognised as a quality standard. We have 18 chapters around the world, probably representing 24 countries at the moment. And we do have a steady flow of, let's say, applicant countries or chapters uh, and we are sort of keen to engage both in in South America where we don't have a strong footprint at the moment um, and uh, I think there's a lot of interest at the moment also from Russia so a lot of the sort of big areas of the world where a lot is going on are showing interest now in what we're doing one of the things I'm keen to stress in this conversation is the building the sort of mission of building smart international vis-a-vis -vis the chapters is that we really do want to work together. I believe strongly that chapters and international have common goals and it sort of beholds holden on both of us, all, all, all parties here, to really work towards that common goals. I know that our bigger international supporters, sponsors and clients who look at us as third parties expect a coordinated and joined up response from Building Smart International and its chapters. So there is a very, in my mind, uh, big strategic need to work together. I think in terms of, of membership, which is what I'm sort of talking about, there are also great opportunities to leverage this relationship to increase membership funding and drive more activity. This slide summarizes the membership uh, framework that we have at Building Smart International. All of our membership categories uh, come with membership uh, sort of rights and entitlements within our chapters. So uh, the strategic members are allowed to join up to five chapters, international members similarly five chapters, and standard members one chapter. I think that the, the standard membership category will be our largest category in the future, but there are quite a number of uh, companies want to join as international as well. So this is, this is I, I think, a growing um, body. We've only been open for membership uh, at international for two years now. And I think this is you know, important to allow us to strengthen our organisation so that we can serve the growing demands of the industry as, as I suppose the demand for, for open BIM standards grows. I want to talk also about our sponsors. We are attracting an increasing number of parties who are supporting specific work programs within Building Smart. And this is not complete, but it is a list here of a fair snapshot at this moment in time. Um, I have to say, I'm sort of proud of that list and hope that it will continue to grow. I think it's very important that we acknowledge our sponsors. So. You know, I'm both proud and grateful for the support we receive. Thomas and uh, Rasso have both made the point about the in interconnectedness of standards in this area. And at Building Smart, we're very conscious of that. We have formal liaison status with ISO and SEN uh, and an MOU arrangement with OGC, who are responsible for similar standards in the geospatial area. We're also very keen to make sure we're properly engaged uh, and well uh, hooked into, represented in the national and client programs that go on around the world. And again, this is probably not all of them by any means, but it does show there's a strong uh, sort of activity both in Europe and increasingly in Asia as well. A little bit about our organization. Building Smart 
International is, is a company that's run and organized by its chapters. It has a, a governance body that is the International Council set in, comprising only of chapter representatives. We now have a board and a management team. And the Strategic Advisory Council gives the board advice only. But I think that provides a, a very strong user engagement and business engagement that the, I think the technical work that has been done needs to have in order to make sure it's properly focused. We run three core programs, users, standards, and compliance. The user program is very much about industry outreach, problem identification, and later on, some of their deployment work. The standards work is the centralized business of, of actually developing solutions and then uh, standardizing those solutions internationally. And the compliance program is about verification and certification. So here is some uh, illustration of, of how that fits onto our, first of all, chapters, who are the principal bodies driving and orchestrating the user program and the standards program, which comprises our groups or open public uh, domains. We call those rooms. Just a little bit now about some of the activity in those programs. This is a snapshot of our standards program. You'll see that we have perhaps, um, I think, a lot of activity going on is what I want you to understand. Uh, the meaning is not particularly important there. But this is, this is an active program with up to 170 people attending our recent summit in Jeju. We have seven now of these rooms. One area of perhaps particular interest and discussion at the moment is the Building Smart Data Dictionary. There is a growing recognition of the need for, uh, let's say, easy ways to share meaning around terms as we try to work with objects and property sets. And the, the, our data dictionary seeks to address that. We are working to find out you know, just how we can, if you like, set up the right business plan to make sure that this suits the market appropriately. In terms of what the Building Smart Data Dictionary is trying to do, it's try, it seeks to... Uh, I got it. I think that's... The red bar at the bottom is really is illustrating that the, uh, this, this tool provides a way of connecting seamlessly different dictionaries or work uh, environments for, uh, in order to convey meaning and to allow people to work between different environments. So, as, a, as perhaps an example, people can easily electronically specify and um, select uh, doors, which is surprisingly not possible today. So, there are a number of features uh, that we need to address in terms of the business plan, and, and this is, um, I suppose, very much the focus of activity and discussion at the moment. It is of a lot of interest, both in the sort of the French environment with their program and uh, increasingly in other areas as well. The idea is that, the, that this should be freely accessible, so it's not a burden on people, uh, but we will recover the costs from people who make money from it. I'd like to turn to a little bit of an update on our recent standard summit. Uh, we, we have two standard summits a year. These are where we do a lot of our technical work. The most recent was in Jeju in South Korea. And uh, in fact, we had 175 people attending there, which was, in my mind, a very high number uh, and perhaps demonstrates not only the high degree of interest uh, that we experience here in Europe, that, that shows that that's reflected in Asia as well. We were able to launch two new rooms there, an airports room and a construction room, both, uh, if you like, led by significant clients. The airports room, room is being led by Schiphol Airport, and had 18 other airports expressing interest in that. And the construction room is led by Kojima Corporation, who want to look at construction, uh, the open BIM uh, uh, applications to the construction site specifically. We also had two uh, building smart specs. These are our sort of publicly available specification documents, uh, it's substantial bodies of work, one from China on rail and another from the Korean Institute for Construction Technology on roads. So, uh, so quite, uh, quite important step forwards bringing those into the public domain and building on that, the infrastructure room now is developing its work plan looking forward 
with a focus on IFC for rail, IFC for roads, and IFC for bridges. So, so this starts to give some clarity of the way forward in these important areas uh, for infrastructure. And uh, this was uh, a record of the signing of the MOU for the IFC for bridge project. And I suppose I'm very grateful for the German uh, Ministry for Transportation for supporting that, um, uh, along with, um, I suppose, international partners. And we do expect the USA to join as well. So I think that will be a well-supported project. Turning a little bit to um, compliance and certification, our software certification program is, I suppose, been gearing up very significantly for the IFC4 certification work. And currently we are, I suppose, calling on some of our user groups to give us clearer definition of their ex exchange requirements so that we can specify more closely the actual certifications that should be undertaken. But meanwhile, I was very pleased today to receive uh, a, a, a steady stream of the um, certifications under the old scheme for the IFC 2X3, uh, and that's uh, an ongoing and active program. This is the, the certification that gives people confidence around the software. We are also developing a program for individuals about individual competence in BIM, uh, which is a new initiative, and that's sort of being led by um, some representatives from the Swiss chapter. Uh, again, very important. So, so then perhaps your leadership, why it is important. Uh, and the point for me very much is that we need to motivate in individuals, companies, uh, and uh, managers, if you like, the people with the purse strings, to support this activity. And that, that might be by you know, allowing working kind, being prepared to lead, or, or backing and funding projects. The, this digitization, the standard set that we need, is still relatively in the early stages of development. Uh, and uh, I use the analogy of the tree to represent the sort of backbone, the, si the operating system, if you like, for how we're going to exchange data electronically. Uh, I, I put it to you that all the different workflows are represented by the leaves here. That's the place where we imagine that photosynthesis is taking place. And right now, we don't have many leaves. So you see the volume of work to be done. And what we don't want is this picture. We need a clear story of how to do it. And this is the, sort of the, the case for coordination, the case for engaging and leading in this agenda. It is, after all, your industry, not mine. If governments are best positions to lead, users can identify the detail. And clients, you are part of the industry, which is certainly not always understood. Finally, thank you and congratulations on your 20-year anniversary, which I think this uh, event is largely a time to celebrate. You know, I'm, if you like, very pleased and proud to be here with one of the founding chapters and see you in such strong health. Uh, and really, I look around the room and realize you are one of our strongest chapters. I really believe that. Thank you very much and congratulations. <laughs>